I want to share with you or talk this morning about another special time every day. And I'm talking about family worship. Family worship in Christian homes can provide a solid foundation for connecting families to God, creating lasting family bonding, and leaving a spiritual legacy. Our lives today are challenged by many forces which are pulling on our families. These forces do not come to us and explain, or even as a surprise. From the beginning of Earth history, Satan has attacked God's primary institutions, family and the Sabbath. And we remember the message in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. What are some of the attacks on God's family today? Let's mention some of them. Drugs and alcohol are doing tremendous damage to families now and day. And what about questionable television and internet programming? We can talk also about extramarital affairs, premarital sex, divorce, <coughs> business, and what about overeating, <laughs> and many, many more. The next verse in chapter 6 of Ephesians says, therefore, because all those enemies attacks, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor, so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will still be standing fair. Thanks God for his promises. Thanks God for his power in our lives. As people of God, we must decide either to be swept away by these winds or build a protective shelter for our families. Family worship provides a structured way for families to study the Bible, pray or communicate with God, and have fellowship together. Every Christian family has this armor available to them. In Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verses 4 to 9, we find the early beginnings of family worship. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God 
with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the roads, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your foreheads as reminders. Why them on the door's post of your house and on your gates? This passage of the Bible is called Shema. And Shema is the first prayer that a Jewish child is taught. Many Jews still recite this special portion from the Bible at least twice daily, once in the morning and once in the evening. And it is the last words a Jew says prior to death. Especially emphasis is given to the words, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. It is a pledge of alliance to the only God and, of course, a declaration of faith. The purpose of the Shema is to teach our children about God, bond our family together, and also ask for protection for our families and our children. And something so special, leave a spiritual legacy. The Shiva provides a wonderful framework for family worship. Having family worship is like putting the blood of Christ on the door's post, showing that your family belongs only to Jesus, our Savior. Ellen White, of course, strongly encourage family worship. Fathers and mothers, however pressing your business, do not fail to gather your family around the family altar. I love that expression, family altar. As for the guardianship of holy angels in your home, Remember that your dear ones are exposed to temptations. This is a ministry of healing, page 393. So we have here a call to parents, fathers and mothers. Do not fail to gather your family around the family altar. How is your family doing regarding this? Do not fail. Do not fail. In Bible times, the altar was made of 12 stones, representing the 12 tribes of Israel. A lamb was placed on the altar and slain, representing the lamb of God, Jesus, who would die for mankind. This was a place of worship, 
altars were also established as memorials, as an act of celebration. The term family altar today is used to refer to the act of gathering family members together to worship the Lord. As in Bible times, the time should be used to give praises to the Creator and remain our families of God's unconditional love and the great sacrifice he made and gave his only begotten son so that we could have eternal life. Today's family worship serves as a time of fellowship and bonding between family members. It should be creative and should give all members an opportunity to participate in this special activity. But what is worship? When we talk about worship, we talk about adoration. It's acknowledging God as Lord and Savior. Please notice, not only Savior, but Lord of my life. When we talk about worship, we are talking about obedience to God. We talk about sacrifice of oneself and time. We are talking about honoring and exalting God with praise, thanksgiving, and humility. We are talking about singing, praying, and reading in the Bible. We are talking about reflecting in God's word. And we can add worship is really a life style. It's not only our time here from 11 to 12 every Sabbath day. It is what you are doing with your life every moment, seven days a week. That is really worship, a lifetime. What is family worship? Family worship is a time when family expresses love and praise to God uh, together. It's a time when family prays uh, together, invites God's presence into their lives, requests divine protection, Praise for the needs of each other and others. It is a time when family has Bible study, hearing, reading, memorizing, and reflecting. And of course, it's a time of fellowships, family bonding, Time builds support and interpersonal, interpersonal relationship with each other. When should families have a family worship? We know the answer, of course, in the morning and evening. And sacrifices must be May we know that. And we have to make a special time for that. Programming that time, especially. In the wonderful book for parents, Child 
guidance in page 520 we find this message in every family there should be a fixed time for morning and evening worship how appropriate it is for parents to gather their children about them before the fast is broken to thank the Heavenly Father for his protection during the night and to ask him for his help and guidance and watch care during the day. And now notice how fitting also when evening comes to gather once more to watch a movie, to watch a television, to gather once more before him and thank him for the blessings of the day past. Two special moments in every Christian home. Every family must review their family programs and determine a set time for morning and evening worship. I remember the best times in my childhood was those family worship in my family. My dad, my mother, and brothers and sisters. Special a moment. Some ideas for family time, for family worship. First one, Keep it simple. Second, make it short, but also sweet. Make it age appropriate. Uh, this is very important. Be creative and use it as a time for sharing. There are many ways to have family worship. The main purpose being to connect God as a family and pass on a spiritual legacy. But we know that in today's busy world, making a commitment to having family worship may seem like a doubting or challenging task. However, the promise of success is found in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Would you like to repeat this amazing Bible verse with me? Please join me. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It's possible to do it. It is not something from the past, the Christian families in the past. We need to see this in our families uh, today. We are looking in our church for a revival experience. But if we want to experience a revival as a church, we have to be conscious that the revival starts with me and my family. So let's restore the family altar in every one of our homes. Amen? Trust God and see him bless your family beyond what you can imagine. God bless you. And now, 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Peace to every family, peace to every home. Amen. Amen.